Hi, my name is Igor Vinograd, and welcome to the first episode of Electronics and Programming Beginner's Guide. To tell you a little bit about myself, after high school, I graduated uh, with an associate's degree in automotive technology from uh, Stark State College of Technology. I worked as a mechanic for about eight years or so. And I was always the go-to electrical guy. I did a lot of wiring and troubleshooting and whatnot. And I got tired of always complaining about how things were designed. So I decided to go back to school for electrical engineering. Uh, currently, I am attending the University of Akron studying electrical engineering. Going from mechanic to electrical engineering, there were a lot of things that I had to learn, and a lot of uh, there were a lot of pitfalls along the way, etc. So I decided to put these videos together uh, to to try and smooth the road out for uh, people that may be following in my footsteps. So that I wanted to share the things that I have learned. Uh, also, uh, I wanted to uh, show you some of the projects that I've done and, again, to share uh, the, the things that I have learned. Uh, so uh, let's get started. Uh, I'd like to show you uh, one of the very first projects that I did. This is one of the very first projects I did. Uh, this is a USB to serial converter board. For the uninitiated, what a USB to serial means are, is that there are many uh, microcontrollers uh, which have a built-in interface called UART or RS-232. Uh, what this board does is it takes in the UART at one end and it provides a connection to a computer at the other end so you can read the data. It also allows you to create commands on the computer and to send them through to your microcontroller. Uh, this helps tremendously with diagnostics uh, because you can write into your code messages whenever your code hits certain milestones and then you can read those messages on your computer to see how far into the code uh, the program went and if there are any uh, issues in the program along the way. Uh, these boards are commonly referred to as FTI boards and uh, they are available from suppliers like Adafruit or SparkFun and even uh, DigiKey, Mauser, Newark uh, sell boards like this. So you might ask, oh, why would I make my own? The answer is that I, as you will learn about me, I like to I don't uh, I, I don't like to jump into things head first. I like to uh, do my research, try things out, and I really like to make uh, little development boards. So, uh, so I made this board to uh, try out a few technologies that I haven't used before, and uh, I put them all together onto one board. Obviously, there's the FTDI chip right here. Uh, this connects the USB port on one side to the uh, serial uh, data connections at the other side. Also, this board incorporates a, a single-cell lithium-iron uh, battery charger IC, which is this guy right here. Uh, it's made by a Microchip. This is the uh, MCP73831. What makes this chip fantastic is it incorporates all of the functionality you need to charge a single cell lithium ion battery. So it will charge it at uh, constant current at first, then it will convert to constant voltage. Uh, while you're in constant voltage, your current begins to drop and when the current uh, uh, drops below a preset threshold, the IC will stop charging the chip to prevent it from overcharging. 
the final thing that I wanted to test out for this board uh, was to be able to charge that single cell lithium ion battery from USB. By default, a USB port uh, provides 100 milliamps of current. I wanted to charge my uh, battery at 400 milliamps of current. So uh, whenever plugging into USB port, first you have to enumerate, meaning the uh, micro uh, the processor has to do a handshake with the computer and then ask the computer to provide a 500 milliamps of current. That's uh, what enumeration is. So uh, let's take a, a quick look at the circuit for this board. Uh, this is kind of the, the heart of the, the circuit. Uh, you have your uh, USB connector here. Uh, the 5 volts then goes into a ferrite bead, uh, which provides uh, like a, a shock absorber for uh, inrushes of current. Then that 5 volts goes to a MOSFET, which that MOSFET turns 5 volts on and off to the rest of the circuit. That MOSFET is controlled by the FTDI chip. So uh, the way this works is you plug the USB connector into your computer. The computer provides uh, 5 volts, which is uh, by default off, uh, turned off by the MOSFET. The 5 volts feeds the uh, FTDI chip. Uh, what's really, uh, the two things that make the FTDI chip really nice is first of all, uh, there is a built-in 3.3 volt regulator, so the FTDI chip actually supplies itself power because the, the data lines for the uh, for the USB are 3.3 volt and not 5 volt. Also, this chip incorporates the, the uh, high precision crystal required for uh, USB. So uh, once the chip uh, powers up, uh, the chip will enumerate, meaning it will ask, you know, it will uh, do a handshake with the computer. And once enumeration is complete, it turns on the uh, this uh, MOSFET, and then the MOSFET provides power to the rest of the circuit. Uh, this right here is that charging I see. It's the MCP73831. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, this charging I see, it's, a, it, it's very small. It's only a, a five-pin device, but it's very, very powerful. So uh, the first thing that makes this very convenient is it has a, a built-in uh, pin that tells you the status of the charging. So uh, whenever the chip is charging, it will pull this pin to ground and illuminate the cell ID. Also, this chip has a adjustable current control for the constant current portion of the charging, which is set just by the single resistor, and then it only requires uh, two capacitors on the input and the output to operate properly. So uh, that connector I showed you uh, earlier, this guy right here, uh, then connects to is connected right here. So uh, to the connector, I broke out 5 volts, 3.3 volts, and ground, then the RX and uh, TX lines, and then the RTS line, which uh, can be used for uh, programming certain microcontrollers, and I may talk about this uh, at a later time. As I mentioned previously, the reason why I did this project was uh, to uh, learn how to uh, use and see if I can find any pitfalls in uh, uh, this design and eventually uh, this design went into a larger project which I will uh, show you later. So uh, I did the schematic and then I did the uh, board layout and this is actually the first board that I laid out. Uh, it ended up being a giant failure because I totally screwed up the uh, package for the uh, FTDI chip. As you can see, the FTDI chip is rather small. Uh, this uh, package is called a TSOT. When I made the my own custom library part for the chip, I accidentally used a SOIC, which you can see is much, much bigger. Excuse me. 
much, much bigger than the TSOP, so there was really no way that I could get this chip to fit onto this board. But I did learn some things. The first thing that I learned was that I did the layout for this uh, USB connector correctly, uh, which were, uh, I was kind of worried about. The other thing I learned is that the connector, uh, this connector right here, <coughs> was too close to the edge because uh, the connector didn't have any support. It would only uh, be resting on the pins. So if you look at these two boards side by side, there we go. You can see that this board, the newer board, is slightly longer than the this board, or uh, maybe it'd be easier to see it like this. That you can see that this board is a little longer than this board. Uh, making that board a little bit longer gave me the space the space to support the connector and they used a little bit of hot glue to uh, do that also it gave me the room to add uh, this section right here uh, this is the 3.3 and 5 volt uh, LEDs for to show me that uh, there's power so the 3.3 volt LED comes on immediately whenever the board is plugged in and then the 5 volt LED because of the MOSFET comes on whenever the board enumerates. It's a fantastic diagnostic tool. Some of the things that help me do both the design and the layout are the data sheets. So this is the data sheet for uh, the FTDI chip. <clears throat> As you can see, the uh, I copied the layout from the data sheet almost exactly, and that's really what the data sheets are there for, because they spec out things like the ferrite bead, the MOSFET, etc., the resistors for the lines, and that it, it's a uh, data sheets are a fantastic tool for not only learning but also design. The thing that really helped me with laying the board out is the the microchip part the <coughs> charging IC uh, the data sheet has uh, suggested uh, actual physical board layouts uh, for the IC that uh, this is the IC then you have your uh, uh, input and output capacitors your uh, programming resistor and your LEDs and this shows you a, a a good layout for both uh, placing the components for saving space and for thermal requirements that the IC may get hot so this layout helps to dissipate that heat. Uh, another thing that I did and this may be difficult to see on camera I will uh, post some uh, high resolution uh, pictures is that I labeled all of the pins on the connector which makes this board uh, very easy to work with because it's very easy to see how things plug into it. So as I said this is one of the very first projects that I did and I will post the uh, uh, Eagle files for the board and schematic. I'll also post the uh, Gerber files and schematic image, etc. So that was one of my very first projects. It didn't go as smoothly as I hoped. That I uh, screwed up the package, uh, but I fixed it eventually and I got a great tool out of it. Uh, I also had some issues programming the FTDI chip, which I think I'll do a video on later. Uh, I got some help from FTDI or with fixing that. They were, uh, I talked to a very nice guy there. So uh, I also uh, am planning on doing videos about uh, board design uh, using Eagle and schematic capture and so forth. Uh, just a, a general electronics, uh, show you some other project I was working on. i uh, maybe show you that very first uh, project I did it's over 10 years ago now. Uh, also some uh, programming stuff, some uh, getting started tutorials and some uh, programming concepts that would help a beginner.
So, uh, as I mentioned previously, I will post the uh, schematic Gerber and Eagle files for this uh, FTDI development board, and you can find them uh, on my website at uh, eapbg.com. That's the Electronics and Programming Beginner's Guide. Uh, uh, please uh, give me any comments on how I can uh, improve these videos. Uh, any uh, topics that you're interested in seeing, any kind of clarifications, uh, comments on YouTube uh, would be great. Uh, also, comments on my website would be greatly appreciated. Thank you.